Scalpers continue to get more bold as they acquire more and more next-gen consoles, leaving everyone else out to dry. Tons of news on Mass Effect Legendary Edition and everything we can expect from the remaster here. And to top it all off, Redditors are using their GameStop gains for good. For more info on everything I just mentioned, pop a squad on the couch. My name is Ray, and I'm bringing you the news today. What's going on my couch family? My name is Ray and thank you for joining me on the couch today. So first things first, if you guys go on to enjoy this or find it informational, please don't forget to leave a like. And if you want more in the way of gaming news, reviews, let's plays, and guides, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and bell icon for more. So to kick off the news today, let's go ahead and talk about scalpers. As you guys may know if you've seen my original video covering scalpers here, scalpers are negatively affecting the prospects of next gen consoles. I would like to say current gen consoles, but they have acquired so many of these next gen consoles that they're still just next gen. Very few people have been able to get a hold of them due to scalpers. What's more, we also found out in the last video I covered, which you can watch here that scalpers are negatively affecting the lifespan of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X because while they are buying these consoles from Sony and Microsoft they're buying them but no one else is getting a hold of them which is hurting the consoles in the long run on online sales. We found that retailers like Walmart, Game and other giant gaming retailers all claimed that they had found a way to stop scalpers and to stop bots from taking more and more next gen consoles. Well, it turns out that scalpers have found a way to go through loopholes to continue to steal thousands upon thousands of next gen consoles. Reading an article from Video Game Chronicles, it reads, Scalper bot firm claims it secured 2,000 plus PS5 orders from Game UK Today. UK PlayStation 5 restocks were again targeted by scalper bots on Tuesday, with one firm claiming its users had secured over 2,000 orders to resell for profit. Retail retailer Game made a new batch of PS5 stock available on Tuesday morning which attracted significant interest resulting in wait times of over an hour for those in its virtual K. Later, the social media account of CarnageBot itself bragged that its users had successfully logged over 2,000 checkouts at game. 2,000 plus checkouts, thousands in profits made it wrote, just keeps getting easier and easier. Ah, oh, that is just gross. So as you guys can see, these scalpers are just feeling so bold and confident in their ability to acquire and take out of the hands of other people who would like to get their hands on these consoles. They're just so confident in their ability to do so that they're just bragging about it. Now, uh, Video Game Chronicles did reach out to Game and there is an update and here's what they had to say. Game has told VGC it will be checking pre-orders to ensure that only one PS5 is sold per customer, a spokesperson said. PlayStation 5 continue to be in very high demand and that demand far outweighs current supply. We have strong measures in place to help ensure that our one per customer statement is maintained to allow for as many individual customers to successfully purchase as possible. All pre-orders are subject to automatic checks and order updates such as cancellations following these checks take place after a customer will have received a valid order confirmation email. At the present time, these orders are still pre-orders and as such no payments have yet been taken from customers. Payments will commence once our order checks have been completed. So this sounds good, but still, these guys are making out with thousands of PlayStation 5s. And again, 2,000 in the grand spectrum of things may not seem like a lot, but you gotta remember, it's not just one scalper group doing this. There are tons of scalper groups doing this. So if you have just say, 10 scalper groups each getting away with 2,000 PS5s, well then now you've lost 20,000 PS5s of scalpers and I assure you there are more than 10 prominent scalper groups. As you guys uh, can remember from my last video, scalpers are making millions of dollars off of scalped next gen consoles. So this is becoming quite the serious issue. 
and kind of to reiterate my point, uh, I have an article coming here from IGN, and uh, this article reads, PS5 scalpers use a loophole to buy stock before it was live in the UK. It goes on to read, multiple sources who wish to remain anonymous have confirmed to IGN that this is in part because individuals were able to order PS5 consoles from Argos January 25th, a full day before the aforementioned official stock dropped. This was down to a loophole discovered by scalping group Express Notify, a paid for Discord server that shared links allowing users to buy the PS5 before the general public even knew about the new stock. So this just kind of shows you that these guys are working on really in-depth uh, information networks and they're able to get it out there and yeah scalping is becoming kind of the only way to almost get your hands on a playstation 5. Uh, the only friends i have that have been able to get a ps5 the legit way have been those who kind of just spent an entire day spam clicking the buy button at walmart and like if you gotta lose your life for a day to get a hold of a ps5 then something's wrong now if you guys remember in my last video uh, we've seen that it's gotten so out of control that Parliament, uh, British Parliament is taking action. And when you got to get governments, big government involved in gaming and in our issues, that's a problem. Because while it is kind of reassuring to see that they're going to do something with it, let's not forget, like, to do something with uh, scalping and everything, let's not forget that government tends to be blind when it comes to games and a lot of times they can hurt gaming as a whole especially if we just give them the reins because a lot of them don't know about our culture and they don't know exactly what they're doing and what laws they pass on gaming can uh can do to it as a whole so i i'm still optimistically cautious about what they can do for them but then again i'm not even british i'm not in the uk i it doesn't do much for me anyway so hopefully the uh, u.s can get something going here because uh, a, a lot of people could use the, the the brightness that a new console could give them during these trying times I, I know first world problems but that's all i got for you guys coming for the scalping issue so let's move into some happier news brighter news mass effect legendary edition just got a shit ton of information dropped about it Yesterday, yesterday being February 2nd, 2021, a lot of gaming media got a private demonstration of what uh, the Legendary Edition brings and a lot of the news they're reporting is very promising. So I got a lot of news to read to you about this, so just kind of hold under your seatbelts because we're diving in now. Our first article is coming from Game Informer written by Liana Rupert. Uh, it reads, Mass Effect Legendary Edition gameplay trailer revealed coming this May. So we finally have the official release date and it's coming May. We're just going to dive into this. The Mass Effect trilogy is an iconic action RPG franchise that still has fans in love even years after release. And isn't that the truth? Now, the already impressive community is about to get a lot bigger because the remaster is opening up Commander Shepard's story to gamers of this generation. The beauty of the Legendary Edition is it's got something to offer for newcomers and longtime fans alike, especially those N7 fans that may have missed out on the DLC. With updated graphics, smoother UI for the first game, and over 40 included DLC to enjoy, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition is a space experience that shouldn't be slept on, and oh my god, yes! Oh, this is good news. So, we're getting Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, and from the sounds of everything I've read from all these news outlets or gaming news outlets, uh, it seems that Mass Effect 1 is the one that's getting a lot of uh, uplift, and of course it is. It's the one that needed it the most. It's a 13-year-old game, and I'm just excited to see that some of those speculations and rumors are proving true. It seems that we're, you guys are going to see as we get into reading more of these articles, but it seems that Mass Effect 1 is in fact getting a gameplay update to match that of uh, Mass Effect 2 and 3. So it's going to be a little less clunky and it's going to flow a lot better. Um, other things I do know is Mass Effect uh, 1, 2, and 3 in this remaster is that they're going to be using the Unreal 3 engine, not the Unreal 4. So it's still not going to be like next-gen graphics, but it 
from what I'm seeing of some of these trailers and of uh, releases and uh, the footage that's getting out of the remaster is it's looking pretty clean. I'm pretty stoked to see how Mass Effect 1 is about to play and I'm just getting more and more excited to travel back in and fight some Reapers and do my N7 thing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just even more happy that this trilogy uh, remaster is coming with so much and don't just take it from me uh, let me get back into this article and read to you a lot of the things that are coming so weapon armor packs equalizer pack the Aegis pack firepower pack the Cerberus weapon and armor the arc projector mass effect 2 alternate appearance pack 1 mass effect 2 alternate appearance pack 2 so on and so forth uh, DLC that's going to be included is Bring Down the Sky, Genesis, Zaid, The Price of Regen Revenge, Kasumi, Stolen Memory, Lair of Shadow Broker, and I'm not going to read them all. You can see them up here on the screen. So we're getting all these DLCs, uh, promos like the Blood Dragon armor from Dragon Age Origins, which was the most badass armor ever. Like, I wore it throughout the entire game on some playthroughs, and I just fucking, I'm stoked. It looks like we're getting a lot of value coming here in these, uh in these updates and then uh, uh something to read also to you guys is this uh mass effect one two and three over 40 dlc included as you just saw remastered for 4k enhanced in, uh visuals concerning models lighting shaders and special effects gameplay and quality of life improvements all available under one single launcher so once you guys get it on your console or your pc and you hit that launcher you're gonna just go to one game and you can choose between uh, mass effect one two or three from that single launcher so that's exciting and of course all your saved data will be able to connect to it which you know uh, it wouldn't be mass effect without having all the different games uh, save uh, saves connecting to one another to continue that whole Con con uh, continuous story. Jeez, I can't talk. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Uh, we got a lot more news to jump in, so I'm just going to continue on. The next portion of our info dump comes from Eurogamer, and it reads, Mass Effect Returns, Bioware Talks Trilogy Tweaks and Franchise Revival. Uh, it goes on to read, Mass Effect's Back, the legendary edition of Bioware's beloved trilogy launches on 14th of May, and Shepard's aging space adventures have never looked better. Okay, so I'm a little slightly salty. It's coming out in May, but you know, they said they want to release a little bit later to polish it out. And after bitching about Cyberpunk and all these other games not being more polished, I would be a hardcore hypocrite to get mad at them for pushing it back for polish. So you know what, Bioware? Push it back as much as you need because one game that can't come out and be buggy and not polished is a remaster because then what's the point of a remaster if it's not polished so good on them for pushing it back to make sure that it is polished and may 14th isn't that far off so very soon here guys still this spring we will be back in space kicking ass and taking names so the uh, article continues to go on and just throw out some of the specs that we can expect from this remastered trilogy so it reads First, some specifics. The Mass Effect Trilogy's Legendary Edition includes 4K support, as we just saw, and HDR compatibility, plus 60 frames per second on PC and consoles from the PS4 Pro, Xbox One Series X, forward. And <coughs> forward. On PC, it adds support for controllers. Oh, that's sick! Controllers! Okay, I, I played on PC, but... I'm, I'm not really a PC gamer, but that's where I played all of my Mass Effect games and especially just trying to play without a controller for me was a little rough. I, I'm not good at playing uh, mouse and keyboard, so that's good news. Um, continue back on. And 21.9 widescreen display. Yes, that's so nice. As expected, all three games and all single player DLCs are included. There's no multiplayer mode. So yeah, sadly there won't be multiplayer mode, but I suspect that's probably because they had so much work uh, just getting Mass Effect 1 up to speed so that it could just be playable next to Mass Effect 2 and 3. So, you know, if that means we gotta kinda cut back on Mass Effect, multiplayer mode that's cool i know there's a lot of people out there who enjoyed it i did too it was an okay multiplayer mode but i'm just happy that the single player aspect is getting some love and that's what i'm mostly excited for to jump into 
Sadly though, it reads, no additional story elements and no version yet for Nintendo Switch. So sorry for my Nintendo players out there, looks like you'll be sitting out yet another game, but keep your hopes up, it might come your way. And uh, I'm a little bummed on the no additional story elements because I was kind of hoping to see like a new endings added in for Mass Effect 3. It's because you know those endings left me wanting, but that's okay. Uh, you get what you get and I'm not going to complain because it seems like a lot of work did go into this remaster and I'm still pretty excited. The article continues on to read, Mass Effect 1 by far the most dated looking of the trilogy has undergone a particularly extensive rework with dramatic improvements to some of its environments. The results on planets such as Eden Prime, uh, Eos and Pharos look on first impression far closer to full remake. Okay, uh, okay, that's cool. I'm super happy to see that Mass Effect 1 is getting the love, and as I just said, it, it needed it. It's 13-year-old game, and I'm just super happy to see that it's getting the love it need. it's needed. And, you know, I think the story in Mass Effect 1 is probably the best of the three, and now that the gameplay has been updated, and if it, if it holds true and it plays well, I suspect a lot of people are going to change their favorite from Mass Effect 2 to Mass Effect 1. We'll see after this drops, but that's just my hunch. But we're not done with the Mass Effect information dump here, you guys. I'm pulling a lot of information from a lot of different uh, gaming outlets. So, hey man, if you appreciate me pulling this together, please go ahead and just hit that like button. And if you haven't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join us in the couch. But getting back into it, our next article comes from PC Gamer. And it reads, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Release date, all the new details, and everything we know. So I'm going to just kind of skip ahead of all the stuff that's just reiterating what we've read in the other articles. And getting into what I find to be the most interesting in this article, and that's right here. There's a universal character creator across the trilogy with a lot more customization options and unified settings options across the three titles on PC. For some reason, each entry in the original trilogy had different settings. Probably the greatest relief in Bioware's demo was, was when a lift ride was shown on the PC version. This was in the Citadel, and Mass Effect Legendary Edition took 14 seconds to load the area where the original game took 52 seconds. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of super stoked about that. For anyone who played the original Mass Effect, just know those elevator rides, dog. Those, those were like, for me, it felt like ever. Like you're in the middle of some crazy shit, and then you get in this elevator for like sometimes for like a minute each, just because it was like the elevator ride was loading the world. You get on it, and then it just kind of took me out of it a few times. So I'm happy to see that that's been updated and you know of course they're just better at optimizing and especially from uh i played it like it was in the xbox 360 era so like now with the xbox one x and ps5 ps4 and all that of course it's just going to be running a lot faster and smoother so i'm super stoked to see that coming here um it does the article does touch on cut content and it reads what about cut content no there isn't any additional content says walter Though at the same time, when you look at all the work done, I feel that the entire first game feels fresh and new. And from what I'm seeing on the footage and reading from all the people who got to see it, it does sound like the first game is going to feel fresh and new. And I'm just excited as ever to jump back into it as I've been saying throughout this video. And again, if you guys uh, need another refresher, this article also restates that Mass Effect Legendary Edition will launch on May 14th, 2021. So keep your eyes peeled for it, guys. Um, if there are any new updates or anything that just comes out, I'll keep you guys posted. So just stick around here in the couch and we will try to keep you guys as informed on Mass Effect as we can until it arrives. And we might even drop a review or a first impressions of it once it hits. And finally, uh, let's end today on just some even more really good news. So as you guys might know, there's just been a lot of craziness going on in the stock market with Redditors taking the fight to the Wall Street fat cats. And it's just been one of the most entertaining things to watch. And just kind of nice to see the little guy get some good shots in here and there, you know, for a change. And these redditors who are winning big off their gamestop and amc uh stocks and everything they're using their newfound wealth for good uh, this article comes from nbc and it reads north texas investor uses gamestop gains to help sick children uh, amid the wall street drama surrounding gamestop and robin hood 
Some investors taking part in the GameStop short sale are using their proceeds to do good deeds for others. One investor, who wished to remain anonymous, delivered 10 Nintendo Switches purchased from GameStop locations around the Dallas-Fort Worth area to Medical City Children's Hospital Thursday. And that's just like a nice, touching, heartwarming story, you know, to see that people who are gaining newfound wealth from something as crazy as the short squeeze on GameStop and AMC, they're using it not only for selfish reasons, they're also going out there and they're, they're helping others. So I, I know there's a, a terrible narrative that these guys are like crazy antisocial, just people wanting to watch the stock market burn. Of course, that might be some of them, but a lot of them are doing good with their newfound wealth. So I just kind of wanted to highlight that on the closing of this video. So again, if you guys found this video entertaining or informational, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more in the way of gaming news, reviews, let's plays, and guides, go ahead and join us in the couch. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon. But hey, until next time, my name's Ray, and you've all been great. I'm out.